but now it's time to roast my good friend Scott Cruz. You know, <laughs> you know I love giving you a hard time, Scott. I love you, but I actually have the utmost respect for you and your ability to talk to dead people and predict lottery numbers. So, my first question <laughs> to you is: How did you first know? And I think this is a little boy, if I'm not mistaken, from the story. How did you first know that you were talking to dead people? versus your imagination well when you're kind of forced into a situation with the poltergeist you realize it's outside of you so your your outer space is moving you know toys are moving on their own without batteries doors wow. are slamming and rattling mm. and so i there was a lot of external physical manifestations so just like the poltergeist movie you know that they were built in indian burial ground right that house mm -hmm. we had the same thing and so there was a lot of like restless energy residual energies in the home that we were in so i was actually really picking up on a lot of those manifestations and apparitions and so it was about when i was like six years old i started realizing that and recognizing that and and predicting things so it started at a very very young age and of course mm -hmm. as i grew and evolved i was able to kind of assess like what i was seeing i was able to go into other locations and be like you know there was a murder here and then my friends would look up the history of the house and there was a murder there wow. and so mm -hmm. um, it, it started for me as becoming a physical medium actually that's how it really started. And mm -hmm. then of course, over time I was, you know, developing my intuition and my psychic ability and, um, and also how to really kind of refine my channel. What's the difference between the residual energies in a space versus active spirit connection. So yeah, that was the decades of, of learning, um, in that regard. But yeah, it started with as being a physical medium, actually, uh, as a young, as, young, as a young child. So mm. do you remember the, so, did you feel fear up until a certain point and and then overcome it? And do you remember that mm. moment? <laughs> You're gonna laugh at this. My <laughs> only fear. <laughs> I was four years old and I would woke woke up having a repetitive dream of being locked in a closet. <laughs> oh. literally, literally had that that exact literal dream. Mm -hmm. So that was my fear. Um, no, because this is the interesting thing, which is why I I was also you know in belief that we are carrying our powers so to speak from previous incarnations because it just seemed normal to me you know it seemed natural to me mm. um mm. and so there wasn't a fear about it there was a more of like a curiosity about it so i would talk to it um mm. so i actually had that very inquisitive mind i wanted to explore it the only time i really got freaked out when i was sleeping and i saw these imprints in the bed and Ooh. all of a sudden the mm. shoes got pulled off of me i did a high kick and ran out of there so <laughs> like that of course you know f will freak you out but it wasn't until i start to really kind of dive into the ability and then i got wrapped up into the religious aspect of things i think the fear came into when i started experiencing the the, the possessions experience and i think that's where mm -hmm. the fear was really surrounding my essence of the awareness of such hmm. but the actual fear connection no What's your, other than that, you might have already answered this, but what's your like craziest experience, you know, medium wise, like what, like the, the high, the, the best mo message you've ever received, like clearest, or do you, do you have any of those moments where it's like, oh, you, you know, you so get your normal many. message and there's something like way up here, you know? Well, there's so many because like I've dealt with, you know, I mean, thousands and thousands of, of sessions and clients and i've had some with suicide i've solved I, actually i solved a couple murder cases mm -hmm. um because they got the information went to the local police and found the person based on what the spirit was telling me of who killed them um wow. i had where uh i think a medium showed a medium session showed me where a, a lost person was before so i had mm -hmm. one of those cases and i wasn't even trying to do those things i just kind of plopped mm -hmm. to my lap and so i think i've always mm -hmm. been kind of afraid of doing those things there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that so maybe mm -hmm. when i'm 60 i'll do it um <laughs> and so i think when when it turns into something tangible that way from message from spirit that's where it was kind of really like wow that really is from from a higher point of view and um and i also prevented uh i think i prevented a couple um health issues too i had a mother tell me mm. tell my daughter to get her gallbladder checked out it's going to burst and then they went to the doctor and they said oh my gosh if it came a day later it would have burst so mm. things like that of preventatives that spirit's always given me which has been amazing because those are tangible you know evidences you know of right. the future what may come so it isn't just like psychically getting information it's like we're actually getting this intelligent feedback of what's about to happen so there's been so many of those 
so many of those, mm. you know. Um, and even someone would come for me to speak to one loved one, and then somebody else's loved one came through, like, did your co-worker's brother just die? And mm -hmm. tell them, it's, and, and so all these, like, other information where people have gotten so much peace just from extensions um, mm -hmm. of people that I've connected to. So uh, spirit works in, in, I would say, mysterious ways in a sense, but in ways that I, I think that it makes me feel honored that I'm entrusted with the ability, actually. So I take it very seriously. Mm. Mm. I'm a longtime fan of your Thursday night show, which you can plug here in a minute. And one of the things I've noticed is that you have constant communication with, uh, yeah, I'm there. Seriously, I have a robot doing it. But you, you actually, you have a very unique perspective because you, for the show, people ask a question and he answers it like live. So it's no, you know, it's obvious it's happening live. You have this common connection to people's dead relatives. So my question is, is there a common theme that you get over and over and over again from a dead relative? Um, well, I, I always kind of joke about the overbearing mom energy and I don't have one. <laughs> and so mm. for me, I, I found a lot of overbearing mothers, but mm. a common theme that I find is like the, the parents who have not been present want to in spirit make up mm. for it. And it's mm -hmm. so like, I don't care if you don't know if I'm around, I'm going to be there in your life as protection, as a way to guide you, as a way to you know put things in your path. And so a lot of times I'm finding like to make amends. And what I always say is like clearing out karma, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I find a lot of that, you know, overcompensation and, um, you know, of parents who have not been there for their children, they're trying to come back and be there whether they want it or not. So I, I find a lot of that, and that's wonderful. And that's, and so it gives a lot of closure to my clients because you know they're just left with a parent that's passed on without closure. And so mm -hmm. I always say a little bit of curiosity can like bring so much into your channel and bring so much more connection that you may, may have never thought that you were possible of connecting into. You know, so um, that's very healing for a lot of people, and I see that kind of making amends and mm -hmm. some spiritual aspects. I'm curious, when did you know you were going to do this as a profession? Like. Was there, oh did you always know or no. yeah? I had, I didn't know. I, I was, everyone, a lot of people know I did music. I was composing for t TV and film, doing quite fine at that, you know, well. And I was a mystic, you know, secret mystic on the side. I was doing parties like secretly and reading people secretly. I had no intention of doing this. So if someone told me 25 years ago I'd be doing this, I'd laugh in their face. I'm like, you're crazy. <laughs> so it just came out where it's like the, I couldn't deny it any longer because spirit was knocking on my door everywhere I was going. I had to mm. stop at the gym. Oh, you're friends with you. And she says she's connected to at this moment and then they would show me the ipod that like our song just came on like it was wow. frequently stuff like that and i'm like i can't live like this like i have to either do something with this or mm -hmm. I, I, it's, it's cumbersome and so uh my guide said well then create a facebook page it's got new free readings i'm like oh my god and so i did and <laughs> then people were like amazed by that and said so in exchange i said please do reviews for me and i did and of course then i was like practicing that for quite some time then it landed me on television and of course and the rest is history um so i've been doing you know professionally for 12 years you know and so now i understand why i, I never would have thought so even now like as my mentoring that i've been doing for the past five years i still sit here saying who am i to give advice but then i remind myself the trauma and all the stuff but you know it's just i never thought i'd be here doing this mm. and you know mm. and uh, and so I'm very humbled by the ability and gift that I have, but it's def definitely not something that that um, I was seeking. It definitely was calling me for sure. Well, Scott, Scott has spoken with a very close past away loved one of mine. Spot on, mm. as always, like you always are. Before we had knew anything about each other, it was mm. unbelievable. Other mediums had said similar things, but not with the detail. And there's so many stories mm. behind that that I won't go into right now, but I mm. can definitely say I felt so comfortable allowing you to connect in that way. So I want to thank you again for that, Scott. It really I appreciate that. Yeah, because that's that stands out to me too. That was a very interesting, you know, information. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, that was that was a that was a deep one. Mm -hmm. I, I want to concur actually, because, um, I, you know, I've, I've gone seen a lot of mediums and it's, it's always like, I mean, my joke is certain mediums are like, is it a tennis racket? Oh no, a bowling ball. Like, it seems like we're playing this like <laughs> game of charades <laughs> until you get the right answer. Right. But you're just like <clears throat> spot on with like my grandmother who is the overbearing mother on the other side. Um, and I feel like you are honestly the best psychic medium I've ever met. So I think it's, mm. uh, you're, you're really brilliant and a contribu contributor to this planet, especially I'm now humble. that we're uh, acknowledging that afterlife exists. Like you are one of those mm. key, key points to afterlife, you know, existing. And that brings me to really for you to talk about, tell us about your practice and how you have crafted your art into uh, revenue streams. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's funny. I never thought about revenue streams until I really kind of met you, Christopher. So, I mean, I've always, I've always, I've always done very well financially, no matter what I've done. So I just had that drive to do well financially. So I always have, but I mm. think that, you know, the passion of what I do has kind of made me focus on, well, I have to need, I need the fuel for my passion. And so I, mm. I got to mm. fuel this, this new social media, be on social media endeavor that I've been resisting so long. So, um, I definitely, you know, to me, my passion is the revenue. So when someone comes for a session, it better be fucking good. And I better <laughs> be focused. I can't, and I use my Virgo Horizon to cross check everything. So being aligned and, I, you know, unfortunately I've had a lot of readers that are on the phone, they're cooking while they're on their phone sessions. Mm. And it's like, wow. I dedicate my space to my sessions. And so to mm. me, it's the quality of, of the sessions that is to me the revenue that where it brings more revenue, people people come back. And I also keep my prices fairly reasonable. I, I know mm. I see a lot of people are high Higher than what I do, and I, I I'm in the process of mentoring, so I want people to come back for the mentorship, so I make it accessible that way. Um, and I also want to help others too. I think that the biggest I would say uh, take back people have is I teach them how to do it too. Like with my intuition mm -hmm. builder course, how do you tap into your own psychic ability, and and how can you utilize like Devin and uh, Chris was saying. I also automatic write in my sessions all the time too. It's a very powerful process to get out of the get out of the way uh, of the of the physical mind. So I think all these things about showing up is what brings the revenue in and so I, it's funny you asked the question too because you know i had a little bit of insecurity about this and mm -hmm. and and someone asked me about my last live asking why i charge for little micro readings on my live show when other psychics don't and i said well first youtube doesn't pay me <laughs> so i and i <laughs> also i've spent my fair share of free readings that you know i want mm -hmm. to keep it where it's a balanced you know audience and balanced energy to where i give and it's a give and take energy um and that you know for me that's that's also a way where pe people can't afford a full session. I give them an option to get a little micro reading done for, for half the price or a quarter of the price. So for me, that's my outlet for people who can't afford a full session. They have another option. So, um, and that's another revenue stream. And I think that people forget we as readers, we are, this is a profession. And mm -hmm. if we don't make a living, we can't serve you. And, and I get upset when people think that astrologers, tarot readers, intuitive psychics, that for somehow we, we're supposed to just work for free for no reason, just because we shouldn't take money. It's like, well, we live in 3D reality. We have to pay the bills. And so, um, so that's kind of like my perspective on the financials on that. But that's why I want people to understand when they're tapped in and tuned into, then it's valuable for them, it's valuable for everyone involved. And that generates more money in a sense. That's, that's a uh, manifestation money, I would say, formula for me, just mm -hmm. creating more value. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I just want to point out, like you've created a great tier system um, as far as, you know, you do get some free stuff at the top of the show and advice at the top of the yeah. show. And then if you want that extra real estate where it's a little more personal, and then if you want, if you have the money, then you can do a session with you personally. So I feel like you've been very fair. And I just mm -hmm. want to yeah. add, it's like, I find that clients don't listen if they don't pay. <laughs> like there's something yeah, about cool. it. They don't take it to heart. Like I can feel they're like, you know, if it's free, they're like, okay. They're and they're on to their life. Yeah. I yeah, muted my sometimes accident. <laughs> and I'm sure all you guys can can understand too. Then you get people coming back and taking advantage. And I had that for like, mm, I think yes. I did Instagram Live for free for like six, seven months. And it was so draining. Like I was just mm -hmm. like, well, I'm starting new with this social media stuff. I'm going to do it all for free. And it was exhausting, man. And I started mm -hmm. to kind of almost resent it a little bit yeah. because people just like exploiting it and taking advantage of it, you know? And so, yeah. mm -hmm. and I tell people, people who are doing it for free are either getting paid for YouTube or they're just new getting started themselves on mm -hmm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's a great question to ask because, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, you should just do it for free. And I, in the beginning I had to like, you know, f I was feeling guilty for a while too. Like, should I, you know? And so mm -hmm. should I just manifest my prosperity? It's like, no, this is a channel to manifest it. So that's how you yeah. Do it, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm.